You are watching the Poor Boys Horology Podcast. The podcast for watch enthusiasts on a budget. Your host for today's podcast is Dr. Ed DeVries, an amateur horologist whose personal collection includes Timex, Rolex, and everything in between. If you are interested in dive watches, dress watches, designer watches, military watches, automatic watches, hand-winding watches, quartz watches, or pocket watches the Poor Boys Horology Podcast is about to become your favorite podcast. So click like and subscribe. Then sit back, relax, and enjoy today's episode of the Poor Boys Horology Podcast. You know, when I did my first uh, radio show here a few years ago for uh, a talk show that I I do locally, I was interviewing a celebrity. In fact, I'll go ahead and tell you who that celebrity was. It was John Schneider, who had played Bo Duke on The Dukes of Hazzard. And I did an entire hour-long interview with John Schneider, and then I realized I'd never pushed the record button. And I had to call him back a week later and do the whole thing over again. You talk about embarrassing. But John was really nice about it, and I appreciate that. Well, I just recorded almost an entire segment here, and then I realized I haven't pushed the record button. So now we're going to start all over again. So I guess we'll consider the last few minutes to have been a practice run. But before we get started, let's do a quick wristwatch check. You can see here I am wearing a Tevais 42mm Submariner Homage. It's a two-tone model with the black and gold. It's a beautiful looking watch. I don't know how good or bad of a watch it's going to prove to be. I literally filmed the unboxing video about a half an hour ago before I started filming this segment, which by the way is the first segment to our new Horology podcast. Hey, welcome to the show. I would like to encourage you to push like and subscribe so that when we put up the future episodes of this podcast, you will be able to get a notification and you can tune in because I know this is going to be a show that you're going to want to tune into. But what I want to do today is I want to take you through my watch collection. And we're going to start putting these podcasts up in January of 2020. Our goal is is to have 12 podcasts, one for each month of the year 2020. But I'm recording at least parts of these segments uh, right now, which is November of 2019. So inevitably, a couple watches are going to be added to my collection because I'm pretty sure that somebody's going to give me a watch for Christmas. That's just the way it goes. But I want to go through the watch collection that I have right now. And you say, well, well, why is that where you're starting the podcast? Because I kind of want to give you an idea of the kind of watches that I collect, the kind of watches that I own. You'll see it's very broad. It's a very wide collection. And so you'll see kind of the watches that I have experience with. And then when you, you know you see future episodes come up, Say, for example, you see, oh, he's doing a podcast on Russian military watches. Oh, he's doing a podcast on U.S. military watches. Oh, he's doing a a podcast on how a poor boy can buy a really nice Rolex or can get his hands on a really nice Rolex and it not cost him a lot of bread. You'll be able to say, well, you know, I've seen his watch collection and he knows of what he is speaking. And so it'll kind of give you a little bit of insight into me and into my uh, horology journey and my collection of watches. So let's go ahead and begin. I've got a watch here. It's on the desk. It is a Echo Drive. It is a two-tone Echo Drive. This was a gift from my mother and father-in-law for my birthday back, I want to say, around 2011. And for a couple of years, it was pretty much my everyday watch. These Citizen Echo Drives, they really are solid watches. Uh, You know, the experts say that you should get 10 years out of this watch. The truth is, is I know people who have gotten 20 years out of these watches. And I've had this watch now for, you know, eight years, and it shows no sign of of giving up. In fact, I wore it just the other day. Pretty much now it's kind of become a beater watch. I had some pretty grungy work that I needed to do. And so I popped this on my wrist just to go to work that day. And it's a beautiful watch. It really is. Uh, Solar powered, obviously, so I keep it out of the box so that it can be exposed to sunlight. Another one that I keep out of the box to keep it exposed to sunlight is this Casio Wave Scepter. It was my everyday watch for about a year back in 2015. I uh, I often have this watch on when I'm on the baseball field, just you know, it can get banged up a little bit if it needs to. But it is an atomic watch. It sets to the atomic clock and it's also solar powered, so I keep it out of the box. This here is another Citizen Echo Drive. It originally had a uh, gold-plated band bracelet 
but uh, it was my father-in-law's watch. His wrist was just smaller than mine. We didn't have the links to put back in. So I put this crocodile band on it and I put a butterfly uh, clasp on it to make it sit up a little higher on my wrist. Again, solar powered, I keep it out of the box. I was with my father-in-law when he purchased this watch, oh, maybe about 10 years ago now. And uh, he just, he needed a watch and we were on a cruise ship and I saw that and I said, you know, I think Bill, you might like that. And he said, yeah, I do. So we bought it about $200 at the time. And uh, he wore it every day for about five years and then he passed away and, uh, and I ended up uh, with the watch and I wear it from time to time just because it reminds me of him. And this watch here, this is a Mako 2. It is an Orient Mako 2. It is a Japanese made uh, dive watch with a day date complication. It's uh, a watch that I purchased here about two weeks ago on eBay for $30. You say, well, how did you get it so inexpensively? Normally these would be about 130 on eBay, but I bought this one used and not new, but it has been keeping excellent time for the two weeks that I've had it. Uh, this is a watch that I like to wear regularly as well, which is why it was out of the box. You can see here, it's got a bronze clasp and a bronze case. It is an Invicta uh, Pro Diver. I replaced the blue leather strap with a blue rubber strap that matches the dial and the bezel. And so it's just a sharp appearance there. I put the, the original Invicta clasp back onto it. This was a gift from my wife. It was an anniversary gift for our bronze anniversary. And so I wear it regularly. I just love the look of the bronze and the way the blue pops off of it. You see there, it's got the Seiko NH35 movement. And uh, unlike a lot of Invictas, there's no branding on the side of the watch, which I really like. You also do not have the Invicta logo on the second hand. You do have an Invicta on the dial, which I believe every watch should be branded on style, but a lot of Invictas are overbranded, and this one was not overbranded. And so I particularly like that watch. So let's open up the box and let's see what I have within it. And the first watch that we'll see here is an Orient Bambino. And this is uh, the newer Bambino. It's got the cream dial and it's got the blue hands. It is a beautiful, beautiful watch. I, I took the uh, Orient strap off of it because uh, I just thought I could buy a a nicer quality uh, strap, alligator strap there. And I also put a butterfly deployment clasp on there so that it will sit a little higher on the wrist. And so now you've seen both of my Orients. I only own two. Let me say this just by way of piece of advice. Do not buy an Orient on wish.com. This was about maybe two years ago now. I saw what I thought was a really sweet deal on an Orient watch on wish.com. I had no idea that somebody was making fake Orients. You would think, you know, they're, they're $100 watches. Why would somebody make a fake Orient? Somebody in China is making fake Orients, and they shipped me one. Needless to say, I was able to contact PayPal and uh, get my money back. But just a word of caution on buying watches on Wish.com. They may not be what they seem. Again, you know, they're even making fake Orients out there now. What's the world coming to? Open your web browser and type in www.barnesreview.org and discover the Barnes Review magazine. In the Barnes Review, you will read vignettes of man, from the prehistoric to the very recent, from forgotten races and civilizations to first-person accounts of World War II and the late Cold War. There is no more interesting magazine published today, nor a more significant and important subject than real history. So visit www.barnesreview.org and subscribe to the Barnes Review. You can subscribe to receive the Barnes Review magazine in its print form, or in convenient electronic delivery. Our host has been a subscriber to both formats for years. So visit www.barnesreview.org and subscribe to the Barnes Review. This here is a Hamilton khaki. It's a military watch. I'm fascinated with military watches. And this in particular one has a Swiss ETA movement. Uh, interesting story how I picked this watch up. There was some joker on the Watch You Seek forum and he was complaining about how he wished he never would have bought the Hamilton. He wished he never would have bought an automatic watch. He had owned it for about a week and he just hated it. And he used to have all big collection of fossil automatic, I'm sorry, fossil quartz watches. 
and he wishes he just would have bought a fossil quartz watch. So I said, you know what, if this guy likes fossil quartz watches, I have a couple I'd love to send to him. So I private messaged him and I told him, I said, I'd happily uh, trade you my two fossil quartz watches for your Hamilton automatic that you hate. He responded to me. He said, what's your address? He mailed me this Haney and I mailed him back a couple of fossils. And, and that's the story. So this is a watch that has a retail value of about $700. You could buy them every day on eBay and Amazon for between $350 and $400 places like Joma Shop and so forth, I got it for a couple of beat-up fossil quartz watches. This here is a Rolex Datejust. It had belonged to my grandfather. And so I'm going to have an episode on uh, Rolexes and Datejust in particular, and also uh, some of, not only some affordable alternatives to the Rolex Datejust, but also uh, how you can get your hands on a Rolex Datejust without it costing you a lot of bread, in this case, I got my hands on this one because my grandfather died and I inherited it. But there are other affordable ways to get it as well. In fact, that's one of the reasons why I'm launching this channel is because there's a show and I absolutely love it. And it's called Frederico Talks Watches. And Frederico is a great guy and he has a watch shop down in Miami. He has another one up in New York City. And he's just a great guy, and he and he's done, I don't know, maybe hundreds of these podcasts now. And he does a great job, and I love to watch him. I love to listen to him. I think he's got a lot of knowledge about horology. And he's an authorized dealer for Rolex and several other uh, brands. And so he's got a lot of knowledge in this subject. But every once in a while, he and his partner, a guy named JP, they will, they will do episodes like... Um, like alternatives to a Rolex Datejust, you know, for people who cannot afford a Rolex Datejust, or alternatives to the Rolex Submariner for people who cannot afford a Rolex Submariner. And so, you know, their alternatives, for example, are a Tudor Datejust, or a Breitling, or a Tag, or, you know, some other high-end brand. And so, okay, you don't have uh, $15,000 to spend on a Submariner. So here, let's... Let's buy this $7,500 Breitling watch, and uh, that can be your alternative. But for guys like us, okay, a $7,500 alternative is not really an alternative to a $15,000 watch. Okay, for example, now, I've got a friend of mine. He paid $15,000, or actually his wife did, but I guess technically he did because she, you know, he makes the money. She racks up the credit card bills but for their anniversary bought him a Rolex Submariner that looks almost exactly like this Chinese watch that I just took off my wrist. $22. His watch was $15,000. Around $17,000 or whatever with taxes and, and some other stuff. Modifications and so forth. But, you know, and I'm not saying that you should go out and buy a $22 watch. I mean, the truth is, is there are $150 substitutes. There are $400 substitutes. There are $600 substitutes. In fact, for $600, I think you can buy a watch that is every bit as nice as the Rolex. Let me reach into the box here, and I'm getting ahead of myself into my collection. But this right here is a Hayakuchi 101, and it's made in Japan. It is a uh, dive watch with a high-end uh Japanese automatic movement. And let me tell you uh, uh, what how this works here, okay? Is if a watchmaker in Switzerland takes a week of his life and meticulously handcrafts a dive watch and puts a little Rolex crown on it, it is $15,000 or more. Might even be $30,000. If a watchmaker in Japan does the same thing, and puts the Hayakushi crown upon it. It is a $300 watch. But this particular beauty here, I bought on Amazon for $130. I had to wait about a month for it to come in the mail from Japan. It was worth it. In fact, I went to go out and buy about five more of these things, and the seller realized the price that they had put on them, and they quickly refunded my money for my additional purchases. And then they jacked their price back up to about $300.
but these things go on eBay for $300. They go on Amazon for $300. You can get them at the Hayakuchi website for $400 if you can read Japanese. It's uh, it's got a ceramic, it's got a ceramic bezel, it uh, it's got a sharp dial, it's got a beautiful solid stainless steel, solid end link uh, oyster bracelet. It's got a signed crown that you probably can't see. It has a signed a deployment clasp or whatever. I mean, this is just this watch is beautiful. It's a wonderful watch, and so you know, again, for those of you who can't afford the Rolex, you can afford that. Those are the kind of things that we're going to be talking about in this podcast. Anyways, getting back to Rolexes, this here is a Rolex uh, President Day Day. It was a gift from a celebrity friend, and uh, I'm not going to tell you who it was because I don't want to name drop here, but I have been blessed over the years to uh, not only to have been involved in various Christian ministry, but also uh, doing radio and other things here locally. It brings me into contact sometimes with celebrities. And I've made a few celebrity friends over the years, and that was just a blessing. Definitely a watch I could not afford, and even if I could afford it, I, I would spend the money on other things other than a wristwatch. But it, it, it's a joy to own, and I want to thank my friend for having uh, got it for me. This here is a beautiful mother of pearl dial. Again, the webcam here on my Mac, not doing it justice, I'm certain. But look at that there, that oyster bracelet. It is a Rolex date just. It was a graduation gift back in the 90s from my grandfather. This Air King here, and I picked it up recently for uh, just a few hundred dollars. I had a uh, pawnbroker friend of mine. I told him, I said, if you ever get an Air King, let me know. And if it's affordable, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll buy it from you. And so he, uh, he gave this person like $600 is what he gave them for it uh, as a pawnbroker. And he turned around and sold it to me for 600 just just to be a friend. And so again, we'll be talking here in a future episode about how do you get your hands on a Rolex at a price that you can actually afford. Of course, the reason I wanted the Air King is because I'm not a fan of complications. The fewer complications, the better. I like my watch just to tell time. And that's the beauty of the Air Kings, is that they do not have uh, the date complication. Extra, extra, read all about it. If you're like me, and I'll bet you are, you like to be on the cutting edge of honest news and accurate information. 26 times a year, the American Free Press newspaper can be delivered to your door, packed with the kind of uncensored news that I know you're going to appreciate. If you're ever dissatisfied with your subscription to the American Free Press, their guarantee is that you just drop them an email and they will gladly refund the unused portion of your subscription. So what are you waiting for? Visit www.americanfreepress.net. Once again, www.americanfreepress.net. And find out about the American Free Press. Do it today. Extra, extra, read all about it. watch that we're going to be talking about here in a future episode. Again, when we talk about uh, possible substitutes for the Rolex, what if you could buy a Swiss watch for under $150? Here is the Swatch 51 uh, two-tone rose gold jubilee bracelet. It has a date complication. It is a Swatch date just. It has stainless steel uh, case and bracelet. Remember swatches, I'm 47 now, back when I was in middle school, about 6th or 7th grade, I remember going down to the mall, spending $35 and buying a plastic quartz watch called a swatch, because all the kids at school had them, and they were cool. Well, this is a stainless steel version of the same, with an automatic movement. This entire watch was made by robots. It's called a System 51 because it has exactly 51 components in it. That includes the movement pieces as well. And you say, that's not a lot of watch movements, or not a lot of watch pieces. No, it's not. But it is a fully functional automatic movement, and its production was never touched by human hands. It was made by robots entirely. You can't really see it there. Maybe you can kind of see on the back of the watch there. It's like a checkerboard pattern. That is the watch movement, that checkerboard pattern there. And uh, we'll talk a lot about that watch here but it's just a really affordable Swiss-made automatic watch. Oh, actually, I did not realize that I had it down here. I have one more uh, one more Rolex here, and uh, 
forgot about it because it wasn't up at the top there. I don't know why I put it at the bottom of the watch box. I have not wore this watch in forever. But it is a uh, Daytona. And um, it's on a leather strap. And I picked this watch up for a song. And it was also a used watch that I had purchased. And um, and just from somebody who was really, really, really hard up for money at the time. And they gave it to me for a lot less than it was worth. And uh, this here is a Pobita. This is a watch that was made in the Soviet era. I do not wear the watch very often because uh, although it does keep time, it is a hand winding watch. I can uh, wind that here and now the sub dial for the second hand is beginning to move, but it just, it's an old watch. It's older than I am. This watch was probably made at some point in the 1960s and it's just an old watch and I don't, I don't want any harm to come to it so I do not wear it very often but I have an affinity for Soviet wristwatches and that is a dress watch that I got one of the very first Soviet watches that I ever got was actually this little puppy here and it is a commandeer ski I will tell you the story behind this watch here there was a series of books that I'd written. They were called Glory and Gray. They were a uh, four-volume Civil War series of books. You can find them now on Amazon.com. If you type uh, Glory and Gray there into the search engine in Amazon, they will come up. It's also available as a two-volume hardback set. But I was doing the research for the books, and I was coming upon some short coming, some dead ends. And finally, I found Somebody with the information that I needed and the photographs that I needed, he it was a retired general from the Soviet Army who kept extensive files on the United States Civil War because he said Russia did not have any interesting wars of its own during that time, and actually because the Russian Army and Navy were more involved in the U.S. Civil War than our conventional historians dare to admit to us. And so he had the files that I needed, but um, he did not have... a a lot of cash and so he wanted several sets of the books after they were printed and I did send him a set of books complimentary for giving me the information I was looking for but he wanted several more sets to give his gifts to people in Russia he said I don't have a lot of money he said but I have a watch he said it's the watch they gave me when I became a three-star general in the Soviet army and so this is a uh, Kamandirsky watch here I've since put it on a Chinese uh, canvas strap because the leather strap that it was on was just shot all to anything. But uh, I love this watch. I wear it from time to time. It's not the best timekeeper in the world. It's a hand winding uh, watch, but it is a, a nice little watch, something nice to have in the collection. And it began my fascination with Soviet era wristwatches. The next one that I would pick up would be this Vostok Amphibia, which I have on a uh, rubber uh, strap here. It, uh, for years I had it on a NATO strap here not too long ago. I put it on. It, it's a beautiful watch. In fact, uh, Bill Murray has a watch just like it. And uh, of course you remember him from movies like Caddyshack and Groundhog Day and Scrooge and beautiful watch. Bill Murray has one. Sometimes you'll see the same watch on Vladimir Putin's wrist. It is an addition that they gave to, uh, I guess, call it the version of, uh, their version of the Navy SEALs, their, their Soviet frogmen got this watch. And this is a watch that I, I cherish. This watch is older than I am. And it, uh, it keeps excellent time. Uh, as far as a watch that I wear is a regular watch here. This here is another Vostok Amphibia. Again, uh, a Soviet dive watch. I wear it more regularly. This is a newer version of that watch. It has the same movement in it. It is a Russian-made Vostok Kamandirsky. It is not a Soviet-era watch, but it is a Russian military watch. I call it the Russian Hulk because of the green bezel and the green dial. Let me just say that, that for years, the bracelets on the Russian watches were chunk. They had the open end links and so forth, which I just hate. And so I would always have to replace them. But this one has closed end links, and it's just a, the jewelry quality, especially that bracelet and that clasp. The Russians have come a long way.
Breaker one, breaker one. Might be crazy, but I ain't dumb. Crazy cooter coming at you. Hey, y'all. Got your ears on? Well, I got some news for you. We're here at a brand new Cooters in the Country store in Sperryville, Virginia. Good old Sperryville, where Cooters started many years ago. Folks are coming from all over Hazard County. And we're going to have a grand old time with good music, good food, and best of all, good friends. Hope y'all can be there. Whoop, oh, whoop, oh, here come Enos. Huck got Cletus with her. I'm down and I'm gone. And so let's go to the bottom drawer now. We have another watch that I inherited from my father-in-law. This is a, uh, a Mickey Mouse watch. It's just a little quartz Mickey Mouse watch on a brown leather uh, strap there. And um, it has a gold-plated case and a stainless steel bezel. Kind of makes an interesting two-tone combination. And uh, my father-in-law picked that up at Disney World, I don't know how many years ago now, maybe 20 years ago, I don't know. But the watch still the watch still runs. I say that it was still running. I uh, put a battery in it here uh, about two years ago, and uh, the watch was running up until about a month ago. And I assume if I put another battery in it that it will continue to run. I don't know. There's one way to find out, I guess. Here's my other Mickey Mouse watch. It is an Invicta two-tone. My wife bought me this for Christmas here a couple years ago. You can see Mickey on the dial, <clears throat> and it's got the red bezel and dial there. And it's a two-tone uh, Submariner homage with, uh, with Mickey Mouse on it there. Beautiful watch. I do wear it sometimes. Maybe it was a birthday present. I don't remember, but it is another two-tone uh, Invicta homage of uh, the Submariner, and it's got the blue dial and the blue bezel. Of course, you can see there on the side that Invicta branding, and like I said, Invictas tend to be a little overbranded, but uh, but I do wear them. Let me just say this. The Invicta is a very quality watch. It's got solid stainless steel uh, links in the bracelet. They have Seiko NH35 and Swiss ETA movements within them. Uh, they're just, as jewelry, they're well-built. As watches, they're solid. They're a solid piece of horology, despite what is sometimes their overbranding. And this right here is a Omega Seamaster. It is the 007 uh, Bond model there. You can see there is the, uh, the Omega uh, clasp there. But this is the same one. I can't remember which of the James Bond movies uh, Daniel Craig wore that watch in. But it is, it's, it's the Bond uh, Seamaster watch there on the NATO strap and it is a beautiful watch and you say how does a poor boy get his hands on a watch like that well I'll just go ahead and I'll let you in on a little secret I believe that it is a Franken watch it's uh it's got the right look it's got all the right pieces and it even has an Omega movement in it but the person that I bought it from uh, he said that the movement, that, that the Omega movement that is in this watch is not the Omega movement that belongs in this case. And in fact, the, the case is not the same. Uh, the serial numbers don't match up and so forth. And so what I believe this is, is I believe that this is a Franken watch. And somebody tried to pawn it here uh, in Florida. And the pawn dealer gave them just a couple of hundred dollars for it because they said that, you know, this watch it looks pretty, but they said this watch isn't what it appears to be. But the person was really hard up for cash. They took the $200. And the pawnbroker, he's like, you know, I'm not really in the business of selling Franken watches, $200, and it's yours. I wore this watch for about a month, and it kept perfect time for the month. So, you know, uh, can't complain. Beautiful watch. Not really a fan of Franken watches, but it, it gave me something that's that, that you know at an affordable price that I otherwise could not have afforded. Here is a Timex. I I'm a sucker for Timexes. I'm just gonna tell you I am a sucker for Timexes. This is a Timex with an automatic movement, and I put a butterfly uh, deployment clasp on it. This watch, as you can see, it sits kind of thick on the wrist. But it has a Chinese made, uh, I believe it is a, it may be a seagull, it may be a tanji, I'm not for sure. It has a Chinese movement within it. I've wore this watch a lot actually, and it keeps really good time. You can see right here is kind of a little dial here that 
gives you the power reserve, how much power the watch has. So uh, I put this watch on, on my wrist and wore it for a month and the power reserve never went down on it. it. It's just a great little watch. It's made by Timex. I think I paid about $100 for it. Again, with that Chinese automatic movement. A Timex Marlin. And this is a watch from the 1960s and it had belonged to my grandfather and it was his everyday wear. He didn't really wear the Rolexes a lot. Uh, he was more of a Timex guy, even though he could afford the Rolexes, he liked to wear his Marlin. And I, it, for a time, I even wore this Marlin. I wear it quite a bit every so often. I put it on my wrist, wind it up, and it keeps time. You know, they say Timex takes a licking, keeps on ticking. As far as I know, this watch, which I think is a 1968 model, has never been serviced. And yet it's been worn regularly for decades, and I still wear it regularly. And it's just an amazing, amazing watch. We're probably going to do an episode at some point in the future just on Timex. Here is a Seiko. It's got that beautiful green dial. It's a retro edition I got it this last Christmas from my wife. And uh, she got this on Joma Shop, I want to say, for about $150. And it's got an automatic movement in it. It does not have a hacking windable movement, so you got to do the Seiko shuffle to get it going. There it goes. But uh, it's got that 1970s look to it, but I really like it. And uh, I wear that watch from time to time, especially if I've got some green in my outfit. Welcome to the Christendom curriculum. You know, every parent who decides to homeschool wants to secure a great education for their child, while also saving time and money. But these days, many parents have another concern. They also want a homeschool curriculum without all the multiculturalist, politically correct diversity doctrine that's really little more than a thin disguise for an anti-Christian, anti-American, and anti-Western civilization bias. Now there is such a curriculum. The Christendom curriculum gives your children a complete education in Bible, history, literature, and more focusing on the classic academic skills of reading, writing, and arithmetic. But we also tell the story of Christendom, the story of the Christian nations, especially as Christ's kingdom has been historically manifest in the nations of Europe and America. And we do so without apology. The Christendom curriculum is the only Christian nationalist homeschool program you'll find. We support the right of the European and American peoples to their historic Christian cultures against the globalist leftists who want to destroy those cultures. Not only that, but we provide assigned reading courses for various hot-button subjects in our current culture wars, including feminism, social justice, and cultural Marxism, among others. These reading courses will teach your kids how to survive a social justice warrior attack how to debate with leftists on social media, how to reform their local churches and communities, and more. We're living in a time of tremendous historical and social change. Christians have the opportunity now to begin building the culture and civilization of the next thousand years and beyond. It's an exciting time to be alive. So if you want to help raise the next generation of culture warriors, if you want your children to grow up with a love for Christ's kingdom and for their own nation, while at the same time learning how to defend America and rebuild the West, the easy-to-use Christendom curriculum is for you. Click the Learn More button to get in on the action. And thanks for listening. Here is a Seiko military watch. These are about $85. I replaced the, the canvas strap that came on it with a, a leather strap, but a beautiful, beautiful watch. And um, let me go through my, uh, my bottom drawer here. And this is my little plastic thing. It's not quite as fancy of a box, but I keep some watches in here. Here is a moon, I wanted a moon phase watch. I wanted to add a stower to my collection. You say, well, why do you want a stower? You know, it's a mail order watch with the Chinese movement. And uh, I know, but for whatever reason, I wanted to add one to the collection, so uh, so I did. And it's I got my moon face and my stower all in one uh, watch there, and it's a beautiful, beautiful watch. And I enjoy owning it, and I actually wear it occasionally. This here is a U.S. military issue watch. I've got it on a black 
uh, leather uh, NATO type strap here so you can't really see the can't really see the strap here I'll take it off the pillow I guess but uh, I took it off I, I replaced its its original strap and uh, this here is a uh, US military issue uh, watch here it's got a composite case it has a seven jewel hand winding uh, Swiss movement within it it's amazing how when you uh, this movement, if it were in any other watch, it, that would be a $500 watch. But the U.S. Army issued these things for $39 a piece. Of course, they no longer issue them, so they're getting harder and harder to come by. But we'll have a whole issue, a whole episode, rather, on military watches. And when we do, uh, we'll be talking about this watch in more detail. And here is the uh, Shocker. And Yale version of that same watch and I've kind of got it on a brown brownish uh, leather uh, NATO strap there same thing seven jewel Swiss automatic movement composite case hand winding movement and uh, these were issued I want to say this this watch was uh, issued in around uh, I want to say 1992 is when this watch was issued in um, in the US military and uh, I've got another uh, U.S. military issue watch here. This is not it, but I'll go ahead and show it to you. And um, this was a Timex. This was a Vietnam era uh, Timex uh, hand winding mechanical watch. And this was not a U.S. military issue watch, however, because if it were, it would have had um, it would have had certain engravings, certain markings on the backside here that it does not have. So this was a, a civilian issue watch. A commercially available watch identical to the military issue but not an actual military issue because again it would have been stamped differently and it would not have had the Timex brand on it if it were an actual military issue watch I still wear this watch very regularly and it keeps great time wind it up again takes a licking keeps on ticking I'm a sucker for Timexes speaking of Timexes I know I've got at least another one in here this was my Cub Scout watch I don't really wear it because the strap is just too small. Maybe I should put a bigger strap on it. I don't know. I keep it in the collection. But every once in a while, I will uh, set the time and wind it and watch it run around for a few seconds. It does still keep time and work. Again, takes a licking, keeps on ticking. We have an Elgin watch. This is an Elgin dress watch. Elgin watches were made in Chicago, my hometown. And so I had to get one just because it's a piece of history and I, I needed to own it. Uh, the watch does keep time. I don't wear it very often. Here is a HMT. HMT stands for Hindustat Machine Tools. This is an Indian watch. It has a workhorse movement in it. In fact, uh, the old Citizen hand-winding watches, when Citizen went out of the mechanical watch business, they, uh, they sold all of their equipment to a company in India called Hindustat Machine Tools. And so this is basically a citizen watch that has been rebranded HMT or Hindustat Machine Tools. HMT went out of business here a couple of years ago. But the government does own the company and they did do a large production of watches before they shut the plant down. And you can still go to the HMT website and there are some models that are still available. And if they're still available, you can get them affordably you know all of them for between about 35 and a uh, hundred dollars and so go to the HMT website and see what you can find here my green faced HMT right here and uh, I wear this one more than the other one just because I like to look at the green dial but they both I wind them up they 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 keep time they run beautifully and this here is another one of the few quartz watches that I have I've really taken a lot of the quartz watches out of my collection but I keep that one just because my son has one just like it. The one my son has was had been my father-in-law's watch. I keep this, I guess, for some sentimental value just so my, my son and I have a similar or identical watches in our collection. It is the U.S. Olympic. It is the Seiko U.S. Olympic uh, logoed quartz watch. And then this right here is a old R.W. Romer watch, a Swiss-made uh, hand-winding watch. And um, 
this had been my uh, uh, this had been my grandfather's watch, and I inherited it as well. I could set this right now, and I can wind it, and it runs. It runs about ten minutes a day fast, so I don't wear it very often. I guess I could take it to a jeweler and have it serviced. Uh, you know, I, I don't know that I want to spend the money f to do that. I keep it for sentimental reasons. Here is another one of the few. As you've been watching this uh, podcast, you've probably noticed that we have some great sponsors, some uh, friends of mine who uh, have invested in this program, in this podcast. And uh, they decided that, that, you know, they wanted to help me out with this. And so I gave them the ridiculously cheap advertising rate of $10 for a commercial to stick it in here. Of course, you know, they did that not knowing if this podcast was going to get a dozen hits, if it was going to get a hundred hits, if it was going to get a thousand hits, if it was going to get a hundred thousand hits. You know, you look at some of these podcasts, for example, you know, Frederico uh, Talks Watches, you know, his podcast got into the tens of thousands of hits. The Urban Gentry and uh, Jody over at Just One More Watch, they've got, you know, podcasts that have got over 150,000 hits. And so... This could be phenomenal, and uh, you know their ten dollar advertisement could end up hitting hundreds of thousands of people's eyes, or it may not. We don't know. That's yet to be seen. Of course, you know some of those podcasts that I just referenced have been up and online for a very long time, and uh, this one's only been up for a short time, but it's going to stay up there hopefully uh, for a long time. And as it does, more and more people will subscribe to the channel. By the way, if you've not done that yet, hit like and subscribe. And also, uh, you know, more people would, of course, uh, you know, watch the video and it'll get more views and more hits and so forth. But what I want to make an offer to you is you say, I want to advertise in an upcoming issue of this podcast, an upcoming episode. And so, you know, I, I would like to be able to say that, you know, I can offer you the same $10 deal, but if this thing goes super duper viral, uh, you know, that rate may go up. I don't know. But at any rate, the, the number of hits can only get more and more and more the longer these things stay online, right? So this is what I want to do. I want to put my email address out there. It's on your screen, so you can read it, but I'll say it out loud, edward.devries at AOL.com. Send me an email. Say, hey, uh, Ed, I'd love to advertise on your horology podcast, and uh, we'll talk about it. If you've got a great product or service or a YouTube channel of your own that you would like to promote, just let me know. Send an email to the address on the screen. Now back to our podcast. You know, uh, quartz watches that I keep in the collection, it is a Timex. It is a uh, Timex Expedition. It's the one of the Indiglo watches, and uh, it's a military uh, type watch, and it's a quartz watch. I've got it on a canvas strap here. Uh, that I got from China for like a dollar fifty and waited forever for it to come in the mail, but I wear it occasionally. Um, just uh, again, one of the watches that was actually in my father-in-law's collection. My father-in-law wasn't really a watch collector like I am, but he did have a few watches, and I, you know, picked them up just again for sentimental value. Here is a watch that uh, that I bought, and I looked high and low for it. It is on a lizard strap. It's a beautiful watch. I've only wore it a couple times in the last year, but it does still keep time. It does have an automatic movement in it. It has a, a day and date complication that was made by Seiko for Sears. And so this watch is a Sears branded watch. I don't know if you can see that or not where it says Sears right there on the dial. Of course, Sears and Roebuck has not had a Sears branded watch in a number of years and now these watches are even more rare because Sears is out of business but when Sears was going out of business I contacted them and I asked them if they had any old stock on these watches and they actually found some in a warehouse in Illinois and they sold me one for its original retail price so I got it for a song. Uh, Sears and Roebuck, little known history. Sears and Roebuck started as a watch company, a mail order watch company. In fact, that is what Mr. Roebuck did by trade. He was a watchmaker who lived in Hammond, Indiana. He repaired clocks and watches, particularly, primarily pocket watches, because wrist watches weren't uh, the thing yet. 
and of course, uh, Mr. Sears worked on the railroad. And so he would buy uh, a bunch of pocket watches for Mr. Roebuck. And then he would send flyers up and down the rail line for these pocket watches trying to sell them. And from that, Sears and Roebuck, later Sears, was born. So it's appropriate that Sears would have its own branded watch, given that it started as a watch company. Here is another watch here. It's called an ESS. It is a minimalist watch. And it is a, uh, a beautiful watch here. I've got it on a blue NATO strap. That's not what it came with. I don't remember what it came with. Some cheap Chinese strap. I don't know. I paid like nine bucks for this watch. It took a couple months to come in from China. Even with the automatic movement, if I want to keep it running for more than about a day and a half, I have to wind it. Uh, so, you know, what do you want for $9, including shipping? Two-tone to buys a date just. It looks just like the Rolex. It is a homage, if you will. But this is a Chinese watch that I paid $8 for, including shipping. It has an automatic movement. It, uh, it has a signed crown. It has a, um, you know, the, the signed clasp. It has the diamonds or the fake diamonds on the dial there. It has solid end links on the bracelet. It's a beautiful piece of jewelry. And the watch keeps great time. It might be the best $8 that I ever spent. And so when we're going to talk about uh, Rolex alternatives that you could afford, this watch is going to come up. Don't worry. I'll also have some other watches that will be in the two and $300 price range. For those of you who just cannot bring yourself to buy an $8 watch, but I know there are a lot of people too who can bring themselves to do that. For example, I'll give you a little uh, story here. I was wearing a, a watch. It was a Tivais that I've now since given to my son. You say, well, why do you buy these Chinese watches and then give them to your son? Well, because he's 13 years old now. He was 12 and 11. He wanted to wear nice watches. And, you know, I could, give him a, I could buy him an Invicta for $100, and uh, it would last until he fell on the basketball court or something. And so if I give him a $16 Chinese watch, and he smashes it, I just give him another one. Or I give him an $8 Chinese quartz watch that, uh, you know, that looks like uh, a Rolex Submariner, but with the quartz movement in it, it's $8 for the quartz, $16 for the automatic. I give him the quartz version, $8. He smashes it one day riding his bike. It's 8 bucks. He got a couple of months out of it. And so I was wearing one of these watches one day. And, uh, and another coach, another baseball coach came up to me. And he said, hey, coach, he said, is that an Invicta? I said, no, actually, it's a Chinese watch. He said, oh, he said, that's a nice looking watch. And I, and I took it out of my wrist and I handed it to him. And I said, yeah, I said, uh, I said, eight bucks. He goes, really, eight bucks? I said, yeah. I said, uh, you know, here's the deal, though. I said, you know, it takes about two to three months for this watch to come in the mail from China. He's like, I don't know that I could wait that long. And then he's like, was it really eight bucks? I said, yeah. He goes, that includes shipping. I said, yeah. He goes, for eight bucks, I guess I can wait two to three months. He said, because if I bought a Quartz Invicta, he said, I'd spend 60 bucks. I told him, I said, you know, you can get the automatic version of this watch for about 16 to $18. He said, really? I said, yeah. He's like, hey, where do I get them? <clears throat> and so, you know, I know there are all kinds of people out there that you are not too proud to wear an $8 Chinese watch. And so we're going to have an episode on these just for you. But that will be a future broadcast. Another watch here to show you, it is a Sterling, it is a German watch with a Chinese movement in it. That is a, um, a Seagull 17 Joule hand winding movement. I have a fascination with watches that I have to wind every day. I actually prefer the mechanicals to the automatics for that reason. Maybe it was because when I was a kid I had all of those Timexes that I had to wind every day, I don't know. I really wish I had kept those Timexes. And uh, some of those other hand-winding watches that I had when I was a kid. I had the whole Star Wars collection. I had the C-3PO watch, the R2-D2 watch, you know, the Darth Vader watch, the Luke Skywalker watch. I wish I had those today. This Sturmansky here, or Sterling rather, this is a Sturmansky, is a watch I'm going to show you here in a minute. Uh, this Sterling is a German watch with a Chinese movement. It's uh, got a beautiful uh, sub-dial in it. I really like that. I got this watch here just a few weeks ago for my birthday. It was a gift. It was something that I had said I was wanting to add to my collection. 
And uh, so I wore it to Vermont uh, a after receiving it, and I was up in Vermont for a few days, and I was in the nation's capital and in Maryland and other places, and received a lot of compliments for this watch. In fact, I had somebody who <clears throat> uh, is actually serving in Congress who saw this watch on my wrist and had asked me about it. They said, is that a sterling? I said, yes. And um, so, you know, you would think it's such an inexpensive watch, whatever, but yet it caught the eye and the attention of a watch collecting congressman. So nice little watch there. And then I've got another watch <clears throat> that I'm not going to be able to show you because I'm actually loaning it out right now. I had a friend of mine who saw it and said, wow, that's a cool looking watch. And so I'm actually letting him wear it. I, I think that's the first time I've ever let anybody other than my wife uh, wear, you know, one of the watches in my collection. Sometimes I've given people watches out of the collection, but I don't know that I've ever just, here, borrow my watch kind of thing. But I, I was nice and I let them wear it. But it is a homemade Batman. And what I did is I took it in Victor 8908 and polished off the side there where they have the Invicta branding on the side. I, I ground that off and uh, replaced the dial with a plain uh, dial that does not have the date window. So the NH35 movement is still intact. The, the date is still spinning under the dial. But I don't have to bother with setting the date because of the plain dial, like I said. Before, I don't really like complications. And then also uh, put new hands on it. So you got an unbranded dial. You've got a Batman bezel that I put on there. And uh, I'll, I'll talk about that watch in a future episode for Rolex Alternatives. Basically, I'll show you how you can make your very own uh, Batman for about $130. And uh, is what it cost me total by the time I bought the used Invicta and, and did the mods to it and so forth. And I'll... Uh, I'll show that to you uh, in some future episode. And then uh, the pride of my collection, which is unfortunately at the watchmaker right now. I was winding the watch. Of course, you know, it's a hand winding movement. So, you know, I'm winding the watch to in the morning. And it feels mushy. And I'm like, oh, great, something's wrong. But, you know, then again, it was a watch that was much older than I am. So I took it into the watchmaker here. A couple of weeks ago actually and he's putting an entirely brand new movement in it and he had to order that movement from Russia so it's taking a little while uh, you know I could have had him put a Chinese movement in it and it probably would have cost, cost he probably would have charged me about 50 bucks to get the movement uh, you know parts labor everything and and just to do that for me but Instead of uh, trying to fix this movement, he was just able to get a, a totally brand new one. And he is going to put it in there and it's going to cost me only $100 to have the original Russian 17 Joule movement in the watch. So I'm looking forward to that. But it is the Yuri Gagarin Stramansky. That's why I said Stramansky here a second ago. It's a Pobita Stramansky. Yuri Gagarin, of course, was the cosmonaut who was the first man to successfully fly into outer space and return to tell the tale. And the watch that he was wearing, which you should probably see pictured in the split screen, is the Pobita Stramansky, which is the watch that he was issued, that he was uh, given, when he graduated from the Soviet flight school in their Air Force. And he wore that watch into outer space and brought it back with him. Of course, my Stramansky is not the actual watch that Gagarin wore into outer space. But it is identical to it. And it was a watch that was manufactured during uh, the same period as Gagarin's would have been manufactured. And so it's just a beautiful watch. And I actually do wear it from time to time, which was why it wore out because of the fact that I was wearing it and winding it every day. Now that I'm putting a new movement in it, I'll probably be able to wear it for the rest of my life and with that new movement in it. So I'm looking forward to getting it back and we'll do a future podcast where we'll be talking about Russian military watches. And in talking about Russian military watches, we'll, of course, spend a lot of time on that Stramansky. That uh, Gagarin style Stramansky is a very collectible watch, so much so that Pobita has brought it back into production. 
and they're making a replica watch of it, which is which is a very beautiful watch. And if you're uh, one who would want to buy such a watch, uh, I'll tell you how to get that in a future podcast. And then they also, of course, have several tribute watches that uh, are not identical to the one that Gagarin wore into space because the dials have tributes on them. And so sometimes if you're shopping on eBay or Amazon, you got to be careful that you're not getting a tribute watch unless, of course, the tribute watch is what you want. And then you got to be careful of the Franken watches. There are some money hungry people there in Russia, but primarily in the Ukraine and in India, who will get their hands on an old watch and they will repaint the dial to make it look like a, uh, a Gagarin uh, Stramansky watch when it is not. And so I'll show you how to point that out as well.